Hey what's up everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood YouTuber, and today, we're diving into the world of Blue Beetle, specifically the origin stories of the first and second Blue Beetles, and how Jaime Reyes became the latest Blue Beetle. Plus I'll give you a breakdown of the Blue Beetle trailer and point out some easter eggs you may have missed. Before we moving forward let me ask you this, are you a fan of superheroes and anime? If so, we've got great news for you. Our online store has got you covered. We offer everything you need to express your fandom and take your love for superheroes and anime to the next level. From clothing and accessories to collectibles and more, we've got it all. Whether you're into Naruto, Dragon Ball, One Piece, or Marvel and DC Comics, we have a wide selection of products that will help you unleash your inner hero. Plus, by shopping with us, you'll be supporting a small business that's dedicated to providing high-quality products to fans all over the world. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to start browsing our selection and find the perfect outfit to express your fandom. We can't wait to see what you'll choose. And now, take a seat, chill, and let's begin. First off, let's talk about the creator of Blue Beetle Scarab, The Reach, is an alien race from the DC Comics universe. They are a highly advanced civilization that is obsessed with conquering and colonizing new worlds. The Reach has a long history of enslaving other civilizations, and they have even been known to genetically engineer sentient beings to serve as their agents. In the context of Blue Beetle, The Reach created the Scarab, which is the source of the Blue Beetle's powers. The Scarab was intended to be a tool for the Reach to control and manipulate other civilizations, but it was lost during a battle with the Green Lantern Corps, and that's when it basically arrives on Earth. I won't get too deeply into the Reach's origins because that would make the video too long. Please leave a comment if you want to know more about them, and I'll make an entire video just for that. So basically, the Blue Beetle Scarab arrives on Earth in the Yucatan Peninsula during the early days of humanity, and it crashes lands in South America, where a tribe discovers it. The leader of the tribe ends up bonding with the Scarab and becomes the first Blue Beetle on Earth. Now, the Scarab was initially created by the Reach to take over the host and destroy the world to make it ready for their invasion. But because of some conflicts with the Green Lanterns, the Scarab was damaged and couldn't control the host. So the host was left to decide how to use their new powers, and guess who was in possession of it? The Mayans. These dudes had been chased off their own land by the Nahua people, but with the Scarab, they took their land back in a matter of weeks. But eventually, Sky Witness which is the name given to the guy who becomes a Blue Beetle, or we can say the Mayan leader, ruled over the Mayans for over 100 years, until his life could no longer be prolonged. So, he decided to pass the Scarab down to his son. But he knew the power of this was too great and too dangerous to just be passed down from generation to generation. So, instead of passing the Scarab to next generation he kept himself in Mayan Pyramid, and he literally crashes down the entire pyramid where it was hidden, and he and the Scarab are buried alive together. For years, nobody knew about this until a treasure hunter discovered it and sold it to someone else. And that's how the Scarab began its journey from one hand to the next. Moving on to the second Blue Beetle, the CEO of Cord Industries, Ted Cord is a man of many talents. Not only is he a brilliant inventor, but he's also a savvy businessman who knows how to get things done. His company is responsible for some of the most cutting-edge technology in the DC universe, and he's constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. But when Ted inherits the Blue Beetle mantle from his mentor Dan Garrett, he becomes so much more than just a CEO. By utilizing his intelligence and resourcefulness to fight criminals and save the innocent, he turns into a superhero in his own right. One of the things that makes Ted so unique as a superhero is his reliance on gadgets rather than powers. He may not have super strength or the ability to fly, but he makes up for it with his quick wit and ingenuity. From his trusty bug vehicle to his high-tech gadgets like the BB gun and the Beetlebot, Ted always has a trick up his sleeve to get out of even the stickiest of situations. But Ted is more than just a brilliant inventor and superhero. He's also a man with a big heart and a deep sense of loyalty. He's fiercely protective of his friends and loved ones, and he's always willing to go the extra mile to help those in need. I mean, am I the only one getting some serious Iron Man vibes here? Because Ted sounds just like him. In the Blue Beetle trailer, we catch a glimpse of Ted Cord and his company, which means that the movie will likely explore his character and backstory in more detail. This is great news for fans, as Ted's story is one that is begs for exploration. We know that he inherited the mantle from Dan Garrett after his death, but what was their relationship like? How did Ted react to becoming a superhero? These are just some of the questions that we hope the movie will answer. But that's not all. There are also easter eggs in the trailer that hint at the possibility of other heroes making an appearance. Could we see characters like Batman or Superman show up to help Blue Beetle? Like Shazam, it's certainly possible, and it's got fans buzzing with excitement. We'll have to wait and see what surprises the movie has in store for us. Back in 2000, DC Comics introduced a new Blue Beetle named Jaime Reyes. He was a teenage dude who stumbled upon some crazy alien artifact called a Scarab that fused with his spine and gave him some wicked powers. The Scarab had a mind of its own and could talk to Jaime, telling him what to do on his superhero adventures. 
Jaime had a tough time juggling his normal life with all his superhero duties, but eventually he found his groove and became one of the coolest heroes in the DC universe. And get this, he's even the strongest Blue Beetle to date. He's able to fully use the Scarabs to its full potential, but to be fair, it's probably because of the previous Blue Beetles who set the stage for him. Is it just me or does this sound like my hero academia? Maybe I'm exaggerating. Let's get back to where we were. The upcoming Blue Beetle movie will focus on Jaime Ray's origin story, and we got a first look at the trailer recently. The trailer shows Jaime discovering the Scarab and how it gives him powers beyond his wildest dreams. We see him struggling to control the Scarab's power and trying to balance his superhero life with his family. I gotta admit, I'm not a fan of the cartoonish hut on his suit, but when he whips out that final fantasy sword out of nowhere, it's freaking awesome to see. And let's not forget, his transformation into the Blue Beetle is just straight up epic. And then we've show the Ted Kord's lab, and I'm telling you, Blue Beetle fans are gonna lose their minds over this. Not only do we get to see Ted's suit, but we also get a glimpse of the original Blue Beetle suit belonging to Dan Garrett. Let me take you on a little journey through comics history. Back in 1939, before DC Comics or Charlton Comics, there was Fox Comics, and that's where the very first version of Blue Beetle appeared. His name was Dan Garrett, and he was just a regular guy, kind of like the Green Hornet, who fought crime without any superpowers. But then, he started drinking some mysterious chemical that gave him superpowers, and voila, another American superhero was born, thanks to steroids. Charlton Comics eventually bought the rights to Blue Beetle and created their version of Dan Garrett, with two T's in his last name. This Dan Garrett was an archaeologist who found a mystical scarab in pyramids which we talked earlier, and guess what? That gave him superpowers too. He could fly, had super strength, and could shoot energy blasts. And that same scarab, which was later revealed to be extraterrestrial, eventually found its way to Jaime Reyes. But wait, there's more. Charlton Comics also introduced us to Ted Kord, a grad student and the protege of Dan Garrett. Ted continued his mentor's legacy and eventually became the Blue Beetle himself. Sadly, he met his end in 2005's Countdown to Infinite Crisis, but fear not friends. In the current DC Comics universe, Ted Kord is alive and well. To be honest, it's all a bit confusing. I don't even consider Dan Garrett as one of the Blue Beetles because of all the complexities. In a nutshell, Dan Garrett was Ted Kord's mentor, and I'm not sure how DC will handle this character in the future. But as for now, Ted Kord is one of the modern day Blue Beetle. Alright, that's it for today's video on our Blue Beetle rundown, and I'm stoked to see how it all pans out on the big screen. It looks like the Blue Beetle movie is going to be a thrilling ride for fans of the character and the DC universe. With the talented cast and crew behind it, we can't wait to see what the Blue Beetle team have in store for us. Let me know in the comments below about your thought for the movie. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more superhero content. Also, please go and check out our store, link is in the description. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.